Hello, and welcome to Moving In Between The Lines. I am Jack George, and I'm a real person. Uh, I have a face camera now. Well, I always have one, but I'm using it now. I want to move to more of a presenting thing where I sit with a like different camera and I stand up and talk instead of me sitting down and talking. I don't know why I feel like that might be a bit more engaging. Uh, but for now, this is how it is. Um, and today we'll be talking about another human being, another real person, in uh, Jack Rodwell. And he played a different role, very advanced for the Wanderers against Melbourne City in, I can't even remember how goals, many goals there were, I think three or draw, probably should have checked that before. But we'll be talking about him and uh, his strengths, his positioning as a presser, which is really interesting, uh, the improvement to Wanderers, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So just a bit on Jack Rodwell's strengths. So he's very a very physical player he's great at like this vertical running where he like just keeps on going as an engine so it's really interesting uh because what wanderers lined up in was something between so it was mainly a 4-3-3 and what you'd have was bacchus here in this right half space redwell in this left half space and yugakovic sitting as like an anchor or a link player from deep uh, singular pivot and Rodwell would sometimes he'd be so aggressive in his runs so he'd sometimes basically it would look like a 4 2 because it, they would be like this and so Yugakovich would, Yugakovich, sorry, would come over here and Bacchus would come a bit deeper uh, and just considering how versatile he is uh, so physicality he's really good at receiving passes um, with his back to goal uh, and this is what happened here was really interesting so he would often draw out O'Neill into this position because Berenguer would press in this like 4-4-2 or 4-2-4 formation for Melbourne City. So Berenguer would be trusted with dropping oh, sorry, dropping deeper to block the passing angle to him with his movement. So then he'd basically go, you know what, I'm becoming a striker. And then everyone would be like, oh my god, what's going on? And then so then and what was really interesting as well is that in Petratus and Troisi, there were two wingers definitely weren't wingers. Like they are not wingers, they are both can be considered wingers, but if they're playing as a winger, it's a, as an inside playmaker or an inside forward. It's not as a winger. And in the first half, particularly, the fullbacks remained quite deep in this um, four to block counter attacks, which didn't end up even working that well. But um, so what we had was when the it was very vertical. So say Rowell comes here and offers for the ball, he comes really deep, and Choice comes out wide and picks oh, and picks it up from here with his physicality. He can make that vertical run just with the ball into this space here. He can play a pass out to Troisi, and he can. He's also really good if Baron goes here at receiving the ball with his back to goal, using his physicality, physicality again, sorry, and turning uh, to create another option. Um, he made some really, really smart runs through the half spaces. So if Troisi was here, he'd always be looking to attack this oh, <laughs> to attack this space in between the centre back and the full back basically almost as a forward or as what um Berenguer and Metcalf do for Melbourne City. So he can make that run into there. Uh and that's kinda of what happened to the goal. It wasn't from Choisi, but he just was like it's those really aggressive vertical runs he makes, which just like sees him hunt down second balls and win possession back or keep possession and I mean he's a really good shooter as well, you know, technique. So essentially when you have a player that is able to verti- like to move around the pitch a lot who's very gifted technically, who's very strong and, you know, can shoot well from distance and from close range, can pass well. Uh, so the Wanderers would do a lot of these small interchanges around the box where they confuse City's defence just by movement like this. And then, I mean, a goal wouldn't be here, you know, and like Petrados comes even more deep and Bacchus is here. And there was just a lot of their attacks came from just these little interchanges. They didn't actually have that much, many uh, chances. And they were sitting quite deep quite often, which was a little bit of a worry. But I think under this new role with Rodwell, he will become like the star of the team, the most important player. And I think it's going to be really, really interesting to see how it develops. To end the video on Wanderers' interesting defensive structure, where they attempted to man-mark Melbourne City's midfield and didn't do very well at it. So what happened is that Berenguer, who is an attacking midfielder in the team, along with Metcalf, they play as two advanced states, but almost moves in second striker. So he's always looking to make runs in behind why is he moving with the arrow i don't know but he's always looking to make runs in behind to stretch play to come out here offer and then to come a bit deeper so yugakovic was 
tracked with was trusted sorry with tracking him and it didn't work that well because Berenguer would move into these positions uh, in the deepest line and Jugovic wouldn't follow him but wouldn't pass him on very well either so all of a sudden you can see here they've been isolated in a 4v4 which is not what you want as you're the defensive team you don't want to be in a 4v4 but it was quite smart I guess in a way because Melbourne City don't play very long long balls very often but we're talking about Jack Rodwell here so what he did is he was man marking O'Neill Metcalf was sorry Bacchus was man marking Metcalf so he was on O'Neill but he was given the freedom because of how the um Melbourne City build up in this like 3-2 kind of thing you can see here there's the two here and then the one two three here sorry that's taking forever so when Petrados and Teresi were a bit deeper uh, it would become this 4-4-2 with Rowell given permission to push up like this as long as he was blocking the passing angle to O'Neill. So say he's here, he's blocking the angle, comes out to here, he pressures Galloway while blocking the angle. And, I mean, yet again, it didn't work that well. It was more just interesting to see him being used but almost as a second striker in the press because, you know, his main job was to man Mark O'Neill, who isn't a key playmaker for Melbourne City it's more just a link player to help progress the ball slightly so then if O'Neill gets the ball he won't ever look for these like really good part like well sorry like really long range passes he'll look just keep tempo moving and um you know just keep the ball rolling which is the same thing as I just said before um so Robo as long as he was marking the pass single to O'Neill he was given the freedom to become part of a front two which is why it was kind of a 4-4-2 when pressing but then it would very much become this 4-5-1 deeper when Melbourne City progressed the ball. But that was interesting, and I thought his role was really interesting. I hope this video was interesting too. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed and you're thinking about it, please do. I get a notification anytime someone subscribes, and it makes me feel happy. So if you want my family to find me less annoying, I would consider subscribing and think of it as helping them, not helping me. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll be back soon. Thank you. Bye.